Okay, we know the law of demand tells us that when the price of a good goes up, quantity demanded for that good will go down. It also tells us when the price for a good goes down, quantity demanded will go up. Okay, there's a basic inverse relationship between price and quantity. That's all well and good in theory, but in reality, what's more useful is to know exactly how much quantity demanded changes when the price changes. And that's what price elasticity of demand tries to measure. Price elasticity of demand measures the responsiveness of quantity demanded given a change in price. Okay, so we know that P1 here, when the price goes down to P2, okay, quantity demanded increases from Q1 to Q2. We know that, and vice versa, when the price goes up, quantity demanded falls. Yeah, but how much? Yeah, give me an actual figure as to how much that quantity changes. That's what I want to know. Okay, and that's very useful for firms. And pretty obviously why. If they want to change their prices and they want to work out well, how a consumer is going to react to that change in price, well knowing that PED figure is going to be very useful. Knowing the elasticity of demand given a change in price will be very useful. We use PED to abbreviate, okay, price elasticity of demand. Now why do we use the word elasticity? Right, think of a girl's hair band or an elastic band, alright? Wrap it around your hands, imagine it, and then you're stretching it out. You're putting force on it and you're stretching it. You're trying to work out the responsiveness of the band. Okay, so a hairband that you can stretch a long way is very responsive, okay, given the force that's being applied. It's very elastic, okay, very responsive, very stretchy. Whereas a, a hairband that's quite rigid, okay, is very inelastic. Regardless of the force you put on it, it's not responding very much, it's inelastic. So that's a good way to picture it. That's why we use the word elasticity. How much does demand respond? Does demand respond a long way when we change the price? Or does demand respond just by a tiny bit when we change the price? Okay? Is it elastic or does demand respond small by a small amount, in which case is it inelastic? Okay? That's what we're trying to work out and that's why we use the word elasticity. Right, it is a measure. Okay? So we can use an equation to actually get a figure out for this elasticity value. And that figure tells us a lot about the responsiveness of quantity demand. So this is the equation that we use to measure elasticity of demand. Okay? So price elasticity of demand can be, used, can be measured by working out the percentage change in quantity demanded over the percentage change in price. So when we know our price figures, when we know our quantity figures, we can then work out the percentage changes in both, plug them into this equation and get a figure. We use percentage changes because raw figures don't tell us much information. Okay? We need to convert the figures into a common type of unit, something we can compare very easily. And when we do percentage changes, it becomes nice and easy to compare. Alright, so, to start off, what is percentage change? How do we actually work out percentage change? Well, percentage change is just the difference between two values. Okay, so the difference between two values over the original value, and then times that by 100 to get a percent. Okay, so write that down if you don't know how to work out percentage changes. Alright, so that's how you work it out. Now, one thing I will say is this PED value will always be negative. Why? Okay, because there's an inverse relationship between price and quantity demanded. So, when the price falls, when the price is negative, it falls, quantity demanded will be positive, it will increase. Okay, so negative, positive, you'll have a negative number. Whereas when the price goes up, when it's positive, quantity demanded will fall, that will be negative. Positive, negative, you'll end up with a negative number. So your number, your PD number, will always be negative because of the law of demand. Alright, let's actually work out some. Let's use this equation to make some calculations. I've got a table here. On the left hand side, you've got the price of bus tickets. And on the right hand side, you've got quantity demanded of bus travel. Standard law of demand, as the price reduces, the quantity demanded of bus travel increases. Okay? Assume there's just a number of people that want to go on the bus. Alright, so let's work out. We've reduced prices, let's say from one pound, hundred pence, to sixty pence. Alright, and quantity demand is responded like that. Well, let's work out using our equation here, our actual PD figure. First thing we need to do is work out the percentage change in quantity demand. Let's do that first. Alright, so remember, difference over original times by hundred. The difference between the two values there is 300 over the original value is 1000 times that by 100 to go percent 
and we get 30%. Okay, a 30% increase in demand. Let's do the same for price change. What's the percentage change in price? Well, I'll give it red. The difference okay, is minus 40. Okay? So price has fallen by minus 40. 40% okay? price fall. Over the original price, which was 100p, one pound, times that by 100, okay, and we get uh, minus 40%. Alright? I put the minus in there just for you to understand why it's going to be negative at the bottom. So price fall uh, minus 40%. So 30% is the top number here, that's the percentage change in quantity demanded. Minus 40% is the percentage change in price. Okay? Put them over each other equals minus 0.75. That's our PED figure right there. Okay? Minus 1.75. So when we change the price from one pound to 60p, that's the response to quantity demanded. I'll explain that, what that means in a second. Let's do the same thing for the next price change. Alright, so now let's say that the price has fallen from 60p to 30p. Okay, let's again work out the percentage change in quantity demanded first. Alright, so it's gone from 1,300 to 2,275, which is a difference of 975, over the original, which was 1,300, times by um, 100 to get a percent, and that gives you a 75% increase in quantity demand. Okay, that's our top figure sorted. Let's work out a percent change in price. The difference, 30p, minus 30p, which has fallen, over the original, which was 60p, times that by 100, gives you a fallen price, 50% fallen price. Put them over each other, 75% divided by minus 50%, gives you minus 1.5, and that's our PED figure at the end. Okay, so the calculation is quite straightforward. The best way to get good at these, practice loads. Make up loads of figures, make sure they follow the law of demand, and then you'll get um, very, very good at them very quickly. All right, but anyway, you've got your own figures now. How can we actually interpret these figures? So we know that the signs are always going to be negative. Therefore, we just ignore the sign. We keep it in there, but we ignore it. This is what's important, to interpret your figures like this. So, if your figure, again ignoring the sign, if your figure is greater than 1, okay, we would say demand is price elastic. If your figure is less than 1, demand is price inelastic. Okay? If it's equal to 1, we say demand is unit elastic, or there's a unitary elasticity. Okay. If your PD figure was zero, we'd say demand for that good is perfectly inelastic. And if your figure was infinity, we would say demand for that good is perfectly elastic. And these are just the range of values you can have. Alright? So we've got two figures here. Let's just look at what those two figures mean. Alright, so there's the first one and there's the second one. So the first one was when we went from 100p to 60p. Our figure was 0.75, just minus, but we ignore the minus. Okay, so that tells us that demand for bus travel, when we reduced the price of 100p to 60p, demand was price inelastic, because the figure is less than 1. So it's price inelastic. What does that mean? That, mean, that means that demand doesn't respond very greatly to a change in price. Okay? So... The change in demand, okay, or demand changes less than proportionately to the change in price. Okay? So the proportional change in demand is less than the change in price. Give you an example. So with this figure, a 10% increase in the price, okay, a 10% increase in the price would lead to just a 7.5% fall in quantity. So demand changes but less than the price change. Price went up by 10%, demand falls by 7.5%, less than the 10% increase. Whereas on this figure here, demand for this good is price elastic. Consider, the price for a good goes up by 10%, all right? demand is going to fall by 15%. So demand responds more than proportionately to the change in price. Okay? So the percentage change in quantity okay, is greater than the percentage change in price. We say that's elastic. The response is great. Elastic response. Okay? Very responsive. So the number one 
is very important when we're interpreting elasticity figures. Greater than one, the good is price elastic. Demand for the good is price elastic. A figure of less than one, demand for the good is price inelastic. Now, bear in mind how I'm saying that. Demand for bus travel, demand for the good, is price elastic, not elastic. It's not a rubber band we're talking about. Price elastic, price inelastic. Make sure you talk about it like that. Okay? And those figures tell you. These are just the extremes worth noting down. Okay? In reality, we tend not to see these extremes. Alright, and lastly, how, knowing that demand for a good is price elastic or price inelastic, how does that help us shape a demand curve? Well, let's draw a demand curve. So, price and quantity as we expect. Okay, now, if demand for a good is very inelastic, okay, price, very price inelastic, it would look like this. Okay, it's still sloping downwards, but it would look very steep. Okay, so when the price changes, let's say from P1 to P2, let's say it goes down. Okay, so P1 to P2, it goes down in price. Look at the effect of quantity. We expect quantity demand to go up. But look at the change, right? The, the price has fallen by that much, quantity is only increased by that much. Okay, a less than proportionate increase. Okay? Um, and similarly, right, pick the same equilibrium. If demand for a good was price elastic, then the curve would look quite shallow. Okay, so when the price, let's say now, increased to maybe, let's call that P3, so just a very small increase in price from P1 to P3, a tiny increase, look at the change in quantity, a massive change in quantity. Okay, so the steeper you draw your demand curve, the more inelastic um, demand will be, and the more shallow you draw it, the more elastic demand will be. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do in this section. In the next video, I'll talk about determinants of elasticity of demand. Okay, what determines whether a good will have um, elastic demand or inelastic demand? And then I'll link elasticity to revenue. But for now, I hope that all makes sense. Bear that in mind. See you next time.